Hello my friends and welcome to another watercolor tutorial. Today we're going to be painting this moody mountain scene, so grab your materials and let's get started. The first thing that I did was I penciled in a light horizon line just because I want the base of my mountain to be completely straight. And what we're going to be doing is essentially creating layers of mountain with each subsequent layer being darker than the previous one and also shorter than the previous one. I started out with a very, very washed out gray color, barely visible to the viewer, just to have sort of a base to go off of. And I painted on a shadow coming from that mountain just to add another layer of detail. And once that first layer had dried, I added a tiny bit of pigment to that washed out color just to make it a tad bit darker. We're not going for super dramatic contrasts here, just, you know, just darker than the previous layer, like just enough to make it look like there are layers. So you want to continue to do this until you are happy with the number of layers that you have. I had three layers, but there's nothing stopping you from painting on even more. And once your layers have completely dried, you can start painting on your pine trees using a shade that is pretty light, but uh, just a tad bit darker than your darkest layer, just to make it look like, well, to make the pine trees visible, I guess. Um, if you don't really know how to paint pine trees, then I encourage you to check out a tutorial that I released a while ago. I think it's called Four Techniques How to Paint Pine Trees in Watercolor, something like that. And it's one of my more popular videos. Um, and I show you basically four different ways to paint pine trees in watercolor. So you can go check it out and pick the technique that you like best. Uh, but back to the video here, um, I didn't like the last layer of mountain, so I think you saw me paint on a darker shade of the black just to make it stand out a little bit more and make it more dramatic. But you want to gradually make the color darker, the color that you're using to paint the pine trees darker, because you want there to be sort of a layer dimension to this painting. Uh, you can even go as far as to only paint some of your pine trees up until kind of the top of the last mountain so it kind of looks like half of the palm, uh, palm half of the pine tree is hidden behind the closest mountain uh, but eventually you want to use just pure black watercolor to paint your trees um, and to make it even more um, what's the word I'm looking for unique and detailed you can extend some of the pine trees beyond the horizon line and make them especially uh, black and pigmented. This will make it look like the pine trees are closer to the viewer and it just adds another layer of detail to your painting that in my opinion looks really nice. You can see me filling in all the little gaps in between the pine trees. Um, I just didn't want my pine trees to look sparse so I just added in as many as I wanted to until I was happy with um, the thick, not the thickness, but the density of the forest behind the, the trees that are most in the forefront. And I even went as far as to add a little bit of shade or shadows coming from those trees. You, th this could look like a shadow to you, it could look like snow, you don't have to paint it if you don't like but, or if you don't want to, but I just opted to. And this is initially where I was going to finish the painting, but I felt like it looked kind of bare. Like there was a lot of white space. So I decided to add some pine branches in the foreground of the painting. Uh, I really like painting pine branches. They're a lot of fun. And it's a very easy technique if you have a very thin brush. You can achieve this look with a thicker brush, you just need a lot more patience. Um, so as always, I've linked the brushes that I use in the description of my video. Uh, this one is a size 1 by Grombacher, but I also use a quadruple zero one that I think is excellent for detail work. Uh, you also don't have to follow 
the exact pattern that I'm using for my pine branches. You can just look up a pine branch on the internet and follow that as your example, uh, whatever works for you. But I just filled in the white space until I was sort of happy with how my painting looked. And that's about it. Once you're happy with your painting, peel off the tape if you put that on in the beginning and you're all finished. Don't forget to subscribe to my channel, like this video, and I will see you guys in next week's tutorial.